another very important topic that I would like to discuss with you uh, is the state control of Hindu temples. Now at Upward, you have uh, very strongly advocated for the need to free Hindu temples from state control. Uh, can you please tell us how the Indian state has very systematically denied the Hindus uh, from having a vibrant temple ecosystem? Right, so the temple takeover is absolutely uh, the most disgusting thing that any government could do. Right? They have no business to meddle in religious affairs. And so they've uh, done some legal, uh, you know, sort of innovations and some um, uh, trickery to get into this sacred institution of temples. Uh, this is wrong at so many levels. Uh, even if we look at, I mean, I, I am a complete anti-secularist, but uh, the temple takeover is an anti-secular act itself, right? You can't meddle in the affairs of, in the religious affairs. It's against the very uh, basic freedom of uh, practicing your religion. Right? The state should have nothing to do with it. Right? Uh, the other thing is that it is anti-community. Right? It disempowers and infantilizes the Hindu community. It tells us that we are not capable of managing our own affairs. It's like the state coming to your house and telling you that you can't raise your own kids and we know better, right? Um, it breeds corruption. Uh, you know, we know of all kinds of silly practices like, uh, you know, these, these uh, uh, cues that are arranged according to how much money you can pay. That is not, that is not something that happened by the will of the community. That happened because the state wanted to maximize its revenue through the temples. Uh, so all kinds of stuff that goes on. And in cases of temples like the Tiruchandur temple, there is blatant corruption going on. You know, there's, there's just no explanation for swindling of uh, lakhs and crores of rupees. Uh, and uh, so that's one problem. Then there is the problem of uh, commercialization of pilgrimage. Uh, you know, it is often sold as, you know, when, 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 the, when the state... Uh, takes up a project with with a certain temple, let's say uh, renovation of a temple. Um, it often destroys the heritage of the temple, but says that we are modernizing it, right? How does it destroy? Because it has no interest in or neither interest nor the expertise. They could always hire expertise, but they don't because they, I mean, it's like, it's just a business thing for them. It's a money-making machine for them. So you have temples like, uh, I visited a temple in Nagarkul, uh, which is uh, in the south of India, where they've, it's, it's, a, it's a thousand year old temple of uh, Mahavishnu, where they have, uh, where they've, dist I mean, in, in the, under the pretext of cleaning the temple walls, they've destroyed all the sacred art by sandblasting it. So that's the kind of stuff that the state does. So there is, uh, destruction of heritage, there is commercialization of pilgrimage and making these th these temples into picnic spots as opposed to sacred spaces. And there is a very insidious tendency of democratizing the democratize, uh, democratization of tradition, which is not democratize, democratization is not a positive word in, uh, in this context because what it does is that it strips off all authority from the tradition and uh, and hands it over to arbitrary state agents. Like a, the executive officer appointed by the state, who is some low level bureaucrat, is given the charge of managing the affairs of the temple, which traditionally have been in the hands of a specialized uh, you know, community, which has over generations uh, learned the art of keeping the deity happy. That's the whole purpose of a temple, right? The temple is meant to house the deity. In fact, the temple is the deity. And uh, the, the, the whole tamjam around temple is to keep the deity in good humor. You please the deity so that uh, one, that itself is a merit that you earn. 
and secondly if you, if there's a transaction involved right if you are going there to pray the deity is happy and grants you your wish so in simplistic terms that's how you see the temple but now with the state in charge a secular state at that which does not believe in the existence of the deity is is actually managing this as you know as some sort of uh, dead asset which needs to be commercialized so that's how uh, this thing is going on there are all sorts of uh, pseudo reformist projects which they which they initiate uh, they distort the meaning of jatis uh, that have been associated with the temples uh, they bring in this uh, oppressor oppressive narrative um, and and they uh, politicize everything from the appointment of priests for example to who will uh, you know manage the administration who will sell flowers you know all these things have evolved organically over time and now the state is meddling its i mean poking its nose in in these affairs which it has no business of doing and last but not the least the impact on ecology right the temples have uh, have for thousands of years have had their own the larger temples at least have had their own uh, sacred groves a huge tracts of land where uh, where trees and uh, you know there are forests in their own right and with the state coming in they have taken these lands away grabbed the land and you know commercialized it buildings have been uh, put over those sacred groves all kinds of commercial projects have started and this this sort of bullying has happened of the hindu communities and no one has raised a voice so far uh, so uh, i mean of course there have been so many stalwart who uh, who played their part but i'm generally speaking of the apathy of the hindu society at large hopefully that is going to change and hopefully i mean i'm optimistic about uh, the free temples movement bringing some change very in in, in the near future but that's how the state of the things has been so the state has no business of being in control of the temples and it is a demeaning and it's an insulting uh, uh, act by the indian state that uh, it it thinks that it should be there as opposed to uh, the traditional stakeholders or the communities please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Thank you. Namaskar.